Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Making Better Teachers podcast. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and each week we'll bring you teachers from around the world. They'll talk about teaching, innovation, creativity, technology, conservation, classroom management, leadership, and a whole lot more. When you listen to the Making Better Teachers podcast, you'll become more excited about teaching. You'll become more knowledgeable and inspired. This is a podcast about teaching for teachers. Settle in, get comfortable, and get ready for this week's episode. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode number two of the Making Better Teachers podcast. It's January. It's cold outside. What better time to sit down in a nice warm place and listen to a new episode of the podcast? Well, this week, we talk all about being a first-year teacher. And all of you of you out there listening, if you're a teacher, which I'm sure most of you are, you've all been there. We were all first-year teachers at one point, and we remember what that was like. I certainly do. It's an uphill, downhill roller coaster ride, and you know sometimes we we get through that first year, um, and we're really thankful we do. But we we take away a lot of different lessons from our first year in the classroom. Now, I sat down with uh, teacher Greg Weiss, who's a Canadian who is based in Asia right now, teaching internationally, and he is working at an IB PYP school. So a primary years program school, which is very inquiry based, which for many teachers who are not like right away, that on its own can be very daunting, even for experienced teachers. So Greg walked into a classroom um, his first year as a teacher, period, right out of university and um, walked into a, a very inquiry based program, an international baccalaureate program. So I actually sat down with Greg last year um, while this podcast was still in development. So. Uh, this is partway through his first year as a teacher. Right now, we, we zoom ahead to January 2019. Greg is partway through his second year as a homeroom teacher. Now, you know, it was a really great interview. I'm really thankful that Greg sat down with us. And by the way, you can find Greg over on Twitter at The Vice Perspective. So go check him out there. And, um, you know, it's, it was a really interesting interview. You know, he talks about his experiences. And it'll be really cool. Uh, maybe later on this year, we can sit down with him again and find out how things have progressed now that he's in his second year uh, of teaching. So all of you out there, take a seat, relax, and uh, listen to this interview with Greg Weiss, all about being a first-year teacher. So this week's podcast, we're going to be talking about being a new teacher. And we've got right here a brand new teacher, Greg Weiss. Greg, thank you for coming on the podcast. Kevin, thanks so much for having me. I'm yeah, so, so yeah, I'm excited too. So, uh, you know, once upon a time, I was a new teacher as well. And I can remember back to those days and um, how it was, how shall I say, a very intense experience. So you are a first year teacher. And what I'm wondering right now, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had this year, as well as some of the biggest rewards so far during your first year of teaching? Well, I think in terms of challenges, the greatest challenge across the board really is finding balance. Um, and I found that both in my personal life, being in teaching, you can always be doing more and always be spending time looking at your computer, especially for us when we live next to the school, it's very hard to create separation. Oh, yeah. So it's just finding that balance in my personal life and school life mm -hmm. uh, is a bit of a challenge. Not only that, but also in the classroom, when we talk about classroom management, coming in with these new ideas of inquiry and it being very open and student centered. And I think, okay, I need to give the students sort of all the control. Mm -hmm. But as time's moved on, I've really realized, well, I need to rein things in mm, yeah. um, and find that balance of giving them opportunity and choice and also ensuring that there's the right protocols and procedures and expectations set in place so that students can succeed so that things aren't almost too student guided that they lose focus. Yeah. So one thing I do want to mention, um, Greg is a grade two teacher. So your students are what, roughly seven years old, six, seven, eight years old. Um, so I think when, um, you know, you're an inquiry teacher, you really, especially new to inquiry, right? You're, they, they, you know, there's so much focus on letting the students take control, letting the students guide themselves. But sometimes when a child is, you know, seven years old, giving them free reign isn't always the best idea, right? Yeah. I suppose you'll learn that yourself this year. Yeah. Going from, you know, you think that 
this idea of open inquiry. Just throw the kids into inquiry and they'll naturally do everything. Mm. And they'll, you know, be engaged and excited about everything. But that's not always the case. You have to slow it down and do some guided inquiries. And sometimes you need to go back to that, what we call sort of the old school teaching mm. of very teacher centered. But it's again, finding that balance between mm, yeah. open ended and student guided, and then finding some meeting somewhere in the middle and giving the right steps and processes mm. to allow for the student. Nice. So how now I'm curious about, I know one, one thing that's a challenge, even for someone who's been teaching for a long time, when it comes to grade season, grading season, mm -hmm. report card season, how do you find that uh, for the first time? Well, I think the key for me in terms of being successful there is constantly just making little notes Okay. and both mentally. And I, I use kind of a, a checklist every few days in each subject, really, where are my students? right now and where do they need to be and then mm -hmm. building that into my lesson how do I get them there so come report card season mm -hmm. the hardest thing is learning to use new report card software oh, yes. more so than the writing yeah part. I found my our lead teachers gave us templates with ideas of sort of what it can look like mm -hmm. and then I can use that and tweak that to my students to really meet their needs and to be able to express their learning and use real data mm -hmm. to implement Nice, nice. So I'm curious, you know, with with regards to lesson planning this year, did you find it a bit overwhelming, especially in the beginning, your first month or so? Was were planning your lessons? You know, did you, were there some late nights for you? I think for me, in terms of lesson planning, I always come in with these ideas and I have them really down. And the planning of the lesson is different to the execution of the lesson. Okay. So really getting that nitty gritty detail into the lesson planning is something I'm still working on. I come in with a big overarching idea, but just need to work on finding clarity and making sure that all those little pieces, like I was saying in the classroom management, are incorporated yeah. into it okay. and being able to expect the unexpected or being able to anticipate what is going to happen in the learning mm. journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of balls to juggle for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and, and I, I guess, you know, we all face challenges, even experienced teachers like myself. Um, sometimes you never know what you're gonna what you're gonna deal with when you walk into the door in the morning in that classroom, right? Um, but I'm curious, what have been some of the more rewarding aspects of your first year to this point? I think the most rewarding thing is building the relationships with students and seeing mm -hmm. their growth and supporting them in their growth, not just academically, mm -hmm. but socially, and really just seeing seeing children grow is it's amazing. I'm not a father or a parent or anything yet, but it's amazing to think the impact that you have on these students and the ways that you can help bring them to be an amazing young adult. And yeah. That's really the best part. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, a lot of the kids that we do teach probably have a lot more contact with you than a parent, mm -hmm. um, especially in a situation where we are, where a lot of our students have drivers and housekeepers who take care of them and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely rewarding too. I think, especially when you see how much, you know, the children like you and they want to be around you. Um, Okay, so um, we're right now, as we do this interview, we're kind of, we've got a few months left in the school year. So you got a few months left in your first school year. As you look forward to your second year of teaching, which will be coming up in August, um, is there anything you think you're going to do different? So, you know, a different approach to things that, you know, okay, I, I tried this uh, during my first year and it didn't work so well, or maybe it, it, it did work well, but I want to tweak it a bit. Yeah, certainly when, when you come in, for the first time, everything feels overwhelming mm -hmm. and you're just kind of doggy paddling, trying to get through it, trying to get through as much as, mm -hmm. as effectively and efficiently as you can. Um, and you really focus on the big things and you maybe get the big things right. But as you go through, you realize it's those small details that will make the difference. So maybe you want your students to be able to really engage in their reading and, and enjoy it and learn from it and grow from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it's okay. Students are quietly reading during the time but really going breaking things down into the small details okay. um, so everything needs to be talked about mm -hmm. and I think that I don't I need to work on going back and talking about things ahead of time and in the middle and in the end and always refocusing our attention what are we focusing on and really bringing students to that point of cognitively thinking about what they're doing and why they're doing it mm -hmm. not just doing it because Mr. Vice says this is time to read yeah it's I know I need to improve my reading. Mr. Vice has talked to me about these strategies. Today, I'm going to focus on this strategy and talk about how we can do that and really setting procedures and expectations 
um, for the student. This is what reading is. This is what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like. And bring that looks like, sounds like, feels like into everything and reflecting upon it in nice. our own growth. Yeah. It sounds like you have been doing a lot of reflecting so yeah. far this year yourself, which is something that like we have to absolutely do as teachers, right? I think um, every year that I've been in the classroom, you know, you'll get maybe one year there's a group of students that just have a really great energy and um, their behavior is, is just is just spot on. And um, it's a it's a kind of a smooth sailing for that year. But then the next year you might get a whole new set of kids and uh, there's a personality conflict and there's other issues. And then all of a sudden you're kind of crushing yourself like, what's going on here? Last year it was so easy. This year it's really tough. So, um, you know, we got to do a lot of reflecting ourselves to become better teachers. Now, uh, one, one last thing before we, uh, we wrap up today. I'm curious um, if there's any new teachers out there listening or people who are, like, say, in teacher's college and an education program somewhere getting ready to become teachers. What is one piece of advice that you would give to a teacher who is about to become that new teacher? For me, it's don't compare yourself. You're going to be teaching with teachers who have a lot more experience from you than you, and they've been doing this a long time. Mm. And you think, okay, I want to be awesome in my classroom management. I want to be awesome in my lesson planning. Mm. I want to be awesome in the clarity of how I'm providing information to students. But focus on one thing. Take one piece and say, this is what I'm going to focus on this year. Because you can't do it all. Yeah, you got to know that you can't do it all. And there's people there who are, who are willing and probably really excited to help you and watch mm. you grow. Absolutely. Yeah. No, like when you see that again, like those veteran teachers you mentioned who seem to be great at everything, it took them a long time to get to where they are and they know that they still can improve a lot. Um, well, Greg, thanks for coming on the podcast. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin. Now, I really want to thank Greg for coming on episode two of the, the Making Better Teachers podcast. And there's a few different things that he mentioned that I want to touch on a little bit more before saying goodbye. Now, first of all, um, I just want to mention that Greg and I are co-workers. We work together at the Canadian International School of Beijing. And um, so we, you know, we've worked together. Last year, we were on the same teaching team. Last year, I was a grade two teacher, and we worked very closely together. Now, one thing he mentioned was balance, and that one of the, the struggles he had in his first year of teaching was finding a balance. And I think that's really key, no matter, you know, whether or not you're a first year teacher or a veteran teacher, finding a balance, whether you have a family, a partner, you know, your friends, your interests outside of school and work, hobbies. These are all very important things to maintain and make sure you have a healthy balance because having those pursuits outside of, of school, your work, will make you a better teacher. Um, mentally, um, you know, the knowledge you gain outside of the workplace, the happiness you gain from being with friends and family. Very key. Another thing that was mentioned in the podcast was reflection. And I think no matter where you are in your teaching career, reflection is key. Whether you're doing things that work well, it's good to be able to reflect on those and make notes and say, hey, that worked really well. Let's try that again next year or later on in the school year. And then to look at the things that don't work well and um, to be able to look at that and say, wait a second, I tried that. That did not work. And that's, that's a process that's going to be ongoing throughout your teaching career. Reflection is key because you can make yourself a better teacher that way by, by reflecting on the things that didn't work. Um, yeah, so, uh, guys go follow Greg on Twitter at, and I made a mistake earlier in the podcast. It's at vice perspective. So V I C E perspective, go check him out on Twitter, see the things he's doing. Um, the concept of reflection and balance are great topics for their entire, like an entire episode onto their own. So maybe something in the future, that's something we can look at in the future. And I just wanted to let you know that as I see right now, the schedule for the Making Better Teachers podcast will be on weekends. So either Saturday or Sunday, Beijing time. This, this is the time of the week where I have some free time. Uh, that's when new episodes of the Making Better Teachers podcast will drop. So you can always look forward to those on the weekend. Thank you for listening to the Making Better Teachers podcast. You can find out more about the podcast by checking out our blog over at makingbetterteachers.com. You can follow me, Kevin O'Shea, over on Twitter, at mad for maple We are a new podcast, and you can help us get noticed and help us succeed in a few ways. First, you can head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review and rating for us right now. Next, and most importantly, you can share us on your social media. I'm sure you follow teachers and other teachers follow you. Share this podcast on your Twitter feed, your Facebook, and any education-related Facebook groups you may be part of. 
help us grow, and we'll be around for a long time. We'll see you again next week, folks, with a brand new episode of the Making Better Teachers podcast. Be happy, be healthy, and we'll chat again next week.